Hello everyone, now let's continue with session 3, packet captures with Wireshark. For this one, we have four parts. First one, we have a basic code introduction for the Wireshark. And then we use the Wireshark to capture some package, do the analysis. This. And the third part, we use the Wireshark to analyze this, the common protocols. And the fourth part is the some Wireshark filter expressions. So uh, for the Wireshark, it is a free and open source package analyzers. Uh, this one is, can be uh, used in the Linux, uh, MicroOS, EDS, Solaris, some other Unix like operating system, and also, of course, uh, the Microsoft Windows. Uh, so you can download this uh, Wireshark software from their official website that's a free and uh, you open this one you choose the network adapters to capture and then you click this one for the stop for stopping and when we do the uh, package capture uh, we capture is through use the pod mirror. This is a very common scenario when we do the for example we want to capture uh data going to one server but that server doesn't support the doesn't have this wire shark so we can mirror the mirror all the data go in and out to that controller to another port and in that port we connect our laptop with Wireshark so we can do the packet capture and then also we can do the capture directly for example if one laptop cannot go to the internet we just install the Wireshark and uh, do the packet analysis and also we have other package uh, capture methods like in some devices they have the building capture tools for example some for IAM so they have the tool capture tool uh, in the web UI you just click that button and it will capture the package and configure the rule and in the Linux we can use the TCP dump to uh, capture the package the TCP dump is uh, similar with the Wireshark uh, TCP dump is more used in the Linux uh, is used in the Linux the capture uh, the package captured by the TCP DOM can be opened and uh, be used by the Wireshark. Second part that analyzes some package. So here is a uh, we start from this uh, uh, top logic or from these questions. So server A and server B they have the IP address in the different. Uh, in the different sub, we cannot see it in the different subnets. Uh, this this subnet is the twenty four slash twenty four. This is slash twenty eight, and they have the same DN, uh, gateway. So question is, can server A and server B do the communication normally? So what is the answer? It can or cannot. So I uh, you remember your answer, let's find out the correct answer with Wireshark together. So let's capture the package in the server A while we ping the server B. So the per the first package started out from the server B when we ping the server A is uh ARP request. This is the ARP request. The request is who has y ninety two one six eight twenty thanks to so this is the IP address to get away so the first package set out from the server B is a ARP request for the gateways MAC address and then we can say that it got the reply from the gateway and then we do the continue let's continue we get the capture we got the 
uh, pre request with the IP address, destination IP address. Uh, destination IP address is a uh, source IP address is A, destination IP address is B. But then let's look at its MAC address. You can see destination MAC address is the gateway. So that indicates the server B was the they send the package to the gateway and the gateway forward the package to the server A. So continue in the server B we find that we got a broadcast that broadcast from the server A. Server A. So the server A asks you who what is IP MAC address of the server B and our server B replied this ARP request and then we continue we got the P reply echo reply from the server A and the destination IP address is the server B source IP address is server A and the, the source IP address is server A and the destination IP address is server B so we got the conclusion the correct answer is Server A and the server B can do the communication, but from server B to server A, all the package are forward through the default gateway. So from this um, Wireshark package analyzer, we can see the a network, different network layers very uh, clearly from the application layers. This is HTTP pack, uh, H, H, HTTP uh, message, and then where we can see the trans transporting transport layers with the TCP, and then uh, network layers, data leak layers from this, uh, like from send to the receivers. The send we prepare the for example that this is RTB servers they prepare HTTP content and then it's added with TCP hand and then we go to the network layers they end with IP hand after this IP hand it ended with uh, Ethernet hand they this we call the frame so this frame is set out and then to be received uh, by the receiver during the once you receive we will remove the like uh, data layer, remove network layer, remove the transport layer, then these application layers will be showing our browsers. So during this process, there has the two terms we need to learn, MTU and MSS. So if here is the HTTP package and the size is 8000 around, so can this TCP layer handle it? Will this content will set in the one time? Now the answer is no. So this uh, HTTP page will be uh, divided in different uh, fragments and then be set in the different uh, package. So we know that the, the maximum Ethernet frame is uh, one thousand five hundred and. Uh, 18 bytes. So let's see what is MTU. MTU is the uh, is this uh, Ethernet frame. Ethernet frame rem remove the Ethernet hand. Inner head is the 80 uh, bytes. So usually the MTU we configured in our network is 1,500 bytes and also for some PP OE dial network because we will end a PP uh, PPP protocol PPP handling here so we need to this occupies another 8 bytes so if we use the PP OE routers the MTU configured yearly is 1492 bytes And uh, we can see that from this uh, package, 
if we configure this if this if we capture a package sometimes they show the flags don't fragment if this flag set to one that's me this package cannot be uh, frag uh, can, can cannot be divided into the different uh, fragment so it the situation will happens like if one uh, switch it's uh, MTU is uh, 1500 but this package is very large so this package cannot also is not allowed to be divided to different fragments so this package will be discarded by uh, that switch so the MTU value is very important if this very empty value is not uh, correct so the uh, maybe like the, the page cannot be open some application cannot be used at the when we do the pings there's no problem so if that's empty problem actually it's hard to do the troubleshooting and apart from it we also have mss maximum segment size this only for the TCP. So because we know that for the TCP, they need to do their uh, negotiation between the uh, server end and the client end. And uh, this is the MMC yearly is the 1460Y because the TCP handler is 20 bytes and uh, the IP handler is the 20 bytes so remove these 40 bytes from the MTU that is the MMS MSS we usually use in our TCP connection so from the package we can see that the MSD sometimes for if the terminal have the better configurations or the networks the, M the MSS will change to a lower values And in the TCP connection, they also have other uh, uh, flags like uh, SYN, FN. This one to uh, set up a new connection. This is the terminated connection. For the RST, if we do the troubleshoot, if we do the uh, packet capture, we see a lot of the RST. This should mean the network maybe have some uh, problem because lots of the messy connections. So for the TCPs, we have the three-way shakes. I think you know that. So like uh, the clients initiation, the, 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 the connection. So that is the SN, replace is the X, and then is the uh, another SN and uh, with the ACK. And then we have the re reply, another uh, ACK from the client. So this is the three-way uh, head shake. In the windows, here is another term, the TCP windows. So what the purpose of TCP windows? Because we know that TCP is a reliable connection. If we are set, if the client set one package, it will need to wait for the server and to have a confirm AC king. After receiving the AC king, it will set the second uh, message. But you can say that it need to spend less a lot of time for waiting this ACK package so uh, could we set lots of this set lots of the package at one time and then we uh, wait for the confirm for one time like if we set the same package then they for the users for the server end they will just play one message ACK message say that I already received this same package so for this, we call it the TCP uh, uh, windows. For example, that if this TCP windows is only the one MSS, that's me, the, the sender only can set the one TCP package at one. But if this TCP has the two uh, MS, that's me, we can set the two package, and then we wait for the ACK package from the receivers. Here's the, the package we captured you can see that this uh, sender set five package in a row without client information uh, 
a glass confirmation. Also, we have the UDP connections. Uh, for the UDP connections, it is like a, a very simple connections, simple protocols, uh, much simpler than the TCP. It only have the eight bytes in the hand. So this is not a reliable connection. For the, uh, but this have the advantage because its handler is very small, so you get can you can carry more uh, data. So we can improve the efficiency of the transmission. But UDP has also have the disadvantage because it's not available, right? So uh, they cannot check if the package is totally received by the protocol themselves. If some package is be lost, only the upper layer, like application layer, can uh, application layer can identify which package is lost. Now let's see the uh, third part, the Coleman protocol analysis. Uh, ARP, we know that the ARP is very important. We set the ARP request and then the terminal. The ARP request we usually is broadcast. We broadcast the ARP request and then the if the terminal have this IP address, uh, they will reply this MAC address. This we call the ARP reply. And also we have another another kind of the ARP we call the grid. Grant two tiers ARP. Grant two tiers ARP. This one is uh, very common in our network. If we do the capture, we always can see this one. Uh, this kind of the ARP request only sent by themselves. How, how, how you can understand? For example, my IP address is the 192.168.1.2. So I will ask him who has IP, uh, who, uh, who, who has the IP address of 192 two like that like that so if someone they have this uh, reply so this is me we have IP conflicts this is can help us to uh, find the, uh, the IP conflicts and the DS for the DS you can check uh, like if this we can say that uh, this DS request will Query the this is the URL and then when the in the DNS reply it will say there's the IP address of this URL. So you can see the in the layers three destination one one four one four this is DNS server in China. Yeah for the DNS usually we cost like a cannot uh, open the, the photo page, maybe the DNS is wrong, we cannot got the correct DNS reply, and if the photo page is slow, maybe the DNS server is not the best choice, we can choose another DNS server. For the DHCP request, these are also a very common protocol we counter the our network because it's used to us used by our terminals to update the IP address. So sometimes if we cannot get the IP address, we can use the Wireshark to check these uh, DHCP packages. So how we can filter with this uh, Wireshark, uh, the, the DHCP package use the Wireshark. The expression is that in the filtering bar, we just input the boats, B-O-O-T-P, that's okay, all the DHCP package will be filtered and show to you. And also you can use like UDP port 17, 6, 7, or let's me this two for the ones received and when it's like uh, sent or will be shown to you. The DHCB, how that works. First, our client, the terminal said the DNS uh, discover, this is a broadcast and then the DNS server have an offer is also a broadcast. You can see the destination IP address. And then the, the terminals have a request that got the ACK. So that's the process for the DHCP request. 
Now let's check the ICMP. ICMP this is a very common protocol with with the pin with the tracer tracers in the Windows CMD, right? So for forward to uh, for to uh, filter with the protocol with the ICMP. And then this is the echo request, the P request, and then the uh, echo reply. Yeah, also, we can use this for the tracer. We tracer the so one IP address, we can check the, the, the load it passed. Okay, uh, last part is Wireshark filter. This is like a filter of expressions like the third IP address which is IP the address either the address for the MAC address TCP ports UDP ports and the filter with the protocols especially for DHCP remember this a boots and uh, we can for the filter parameters for example we want to check if there's TCP flex reset package in our network and uh, if we want to include the ARP, we just input the ARP. If no ARP package should be captured, we just uh, type not ARP or just use this ICO. And then is the uh, port. We filter with the uh, port reach, like you want to capture the, the TCP port from the port one to port H, right? Okay, that's all for this session. Thank you.